Okay, uh, followers of this channel uh, will know that I sort of have a love affair with browsers. I'm still really yet to find my perfect one. I've been using Flock for a little while, uh, but I thought I'd move from that uh, back to Safari. Um, one of the reasons being, if I bring up Flock just for a second, um, here it comes, down here. I actually managed to pimp for, uh, Flock. There aren't that many themes available for it. It's not like Firefox. Uh, here it comes. It's taken a little while. I think that's because uh, Firefox is open as well. Uploading stuff to YouTube. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. But I've managed to pimp it. I've got this sort of black look here. Um, also, I've got uh, colored tabs as well. Um, Although those aren't all that useful because you can't determine which colour tab you're going to get. Um, and also, if you could try and sort of say, right, well, these are all my you know, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, my social ones, I'll have all as green and I'll have my work ones as blue or whatever, then that would be more useful, but it isn't. So it's not amazing. But um, it can be slightly distracting, but I think it looks very cool. On the other hand, um, Safari... Just get rid of flock. No, go away. Quit flock. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, Safari is a much less cluttered affair. Okay. Um, and the look is just very clean. And you have all this screen real estate on here. Now, um, I've uh, put some extra buttons on from the customized toolbar thing here. Um, I've put on the uh, autofill thing. Um, I've also put on the downloads thing because all the browsers seem to have their what's currently downloading um, bar in a different place. So if I can click that one, then that'll be a bit easier. Okay. Um, now there are some add-ons that are available even for Safari uh, more than there were the last time I looked. Um, ones that I've had for a little while are ones called Safari Stand. Safari Stand enables you to customise your search bar. So you can hop in here. Shouldn't really be doing that. That's taking too long. Um, but if I do EB and then put um, tape recorders in there, for instance, then that's going to search eBay for a tape recorder. Um, and you could similarly... Um, search Twitter by doing uh, perhaps and that should bring up Twitter friends for instance um, command L is the way to do that by the way um, also uh, that's Safari stand and I've also got a Safari 140 um, pressing control and T brings up um, a box where you can either post the URL that you're looking at to Twitter or clear it and uh, type in a tweet and post that to Twitter like that, for instance. Um, the slight issue with um, some of these add-ons um, are that uh, they will only work in the 32-bit version of Safari now. Um, uh, yeah, because Mac OS X Snow Leopard now uh, lets you um, run a lot of native Apple applications in 64-bit mode, uh, but Safari uh, won't uh, let you add certain add-ons to it unless they're in 32-bit mode. So I'll just quickly show you how to do that. Go to the Finder. Do a little search to find Safari. Okay. Select it, press Command I to get the information on it. Okay, and make sure that that is uh, checked open in 32 bit mode. Okay, um, and that way uh, you'll get uh, to use Safari Stand, which is the shortcut search thing, and um, the uh, Safari 140, which is the Twitter thing. Um, there are some other toolbars available, but I didn't really find them all that useful, although they did work in 64-bit mode. Okay, um, other reasons why I like um, 
uh, Safari are this full integration with the Mac OS. Now if you're a nerd, you're surfing away and suddenly you realise that you've got to send an email. So you just go mail to colon and mail opens, you get an email box there ready for you to start typing an email. You could even put in an address in there and I can type do that and up comes an addressed email. Um, similarly if I do iCal colon forward slash forward slash up pops iCal. So tremendous versatility there. Uh, that only works for Apple applications and I'm not really sure whether that will work in the Windows version of um, Safari. Now, a big feature of Safari is that it integrates with the Mac OS X keychain. Um, at least for Mac users you have a very secure way of storing all the passwords that you use every day, most of them you, that you use without even thinking, such as your email passwords um, and things like uh, any shared drives on your network, things like that. Um, the keychain will store all of those as well as passwords from your browser. And also, if I hop into it here, you can store your own secure notes in here, uh, all in a very secure way. Um, there's my Facebook password, for instance. Okay. Now normally the keychain hovers away in the background, um, and in Safari, it's just hopping in, putting in your passwords for you as you go along, because each site these days needs a password for this and a password for that. It really annoys me, actually, that you can't get into you know, anything without having to put in a password. It's a pain in the neck. Um, but for instance, if I go into Vinyl Engine, which is a site I haven't visited for a little while, but here we go. All right, I'm logged in already. If I log out, you'll see that it's got my password details in there. Now you need to make sure that that is turned on in preferences. So <clears throat> um, if I go to my preferences, Safari preferences, and then hit the autofill. Uh, check, make sure that the usernames and passwords um, checkbox is actually checked. Otherwise, it won't do that for you. Okay. Um, now, uh, going to the advanced tab here, you'll also find that there's another good box that really ought to be checked, and that is called the Show Develop menu in Menu Bar. All right. That puts up another menu called Develop. Okay, if you get the odd page that would rather work with um, Internet Explorer or, or Firefox and not Safari, you can choose this user agent thing here and it gives you a list of other browsers which the Safari can pose as uh, just to get an awkward website to open. I've never had to use that and that, web, uh, that menu is really, I suppose, for web developers and things like that, which I'm not and I'm really, you know, not a techno person at all really. Um, in terms of anything like that. So there you go. Those are just a few uh, reasons why um, I'm going back to Safari. It's just really this Mac integration business, the, the fact that it'll work with the rest of your system. It looks really gorgeous. Um, it's not a perfect browser. I would quite like to have a proper um, Twitter feed uh, on display here that isn't uh, quite as, um, as intrusive as Phlox. It would be quite nice just to have a button on your toolbar that was just like a little T and when you got that you just got a drop down menu with your Twitter feed, um, enables you to quickly post a, a message to Twitter if you want to, um, see your app mentions, that sort of thing and then click away from it and it's gone All right, rather than down here. This, by the way, uh, before I do disappear, this is part of Safari Stand. Uh, it does enable you, um, if you're um, opening something in, you know, got a lot of tabs open, you can see what they all are down here. Okay. Um, so there you go. That's why I think Safari is going to be my default browser, certainly for a little while. I do get fidgety with browsers. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to be using Safari for a fair bit now in the future.